Hey YouTube, my name's Ed. Welcome to my Tech to Boot YouTube channel. And this is part four in my how to build a website from scratch series. Um, today you're going to learn how to embed an image onto a web page. So if you don't know how to do that, you're at the right place. Um, I am continuing with a file we created in my last lessons. And if you don't have this, this is okay. You can still follow along at this point. Um, so you have a web page open here and let's say i want to display an image on a web page well how do you do that we're going to learn today so i am going to make a section here which we learned about in lesson two and a closing section tag and i'll create a heading here sample image okay and we'll create an horizontal roll here save and preview my web page there it is okay so <laughs> my links up here can see uh show what i've been looking for i got some pictures of the titanic that we're going to link here so um how do you link an image on a web page well i'll show you i downloaded a couple pictures of the titanic off google and I saved them to my desktop here, which is also where my web page is. So for now, I'm going to put this where my index or where my web page is. And I recommend you do the same until we get to the next part of this lesson, which will talk about saving images and folders. So um, to dis display an image on a web page, what we're going to use is the image tag. And again, HTML and acronyms, I talk about this constantly, but everything is shorthand in HTML. So the image tag is spelled I-M-G. Okay, and we're gonna put a space and we're going to use the um, attribute called source. And that is shorthanded by uh, the letters SRC. Okay, and we're gonna put an equal sign to open parentheses and close it. Now, if I save and preview that, uh, you will get this. <laughs> in the olden days, <laughs> which I find myself saying a lot in these videos, uh, you'd get like a little blank thing if uh, an image wasn't hyperlinked right. In this case, it's not showing anything. And uh, surprisingly, the console is also not doing anything. So, to link to my Titanic image, again, I have two files I downloaded here. I want to display this picture of the Titanic here, this black and white one. Um, I loved it, Titanic and the history of it, so it's the first thing that came to mind as well as to what to display. And I named this file Titanic, and the extension is PNG, which we're going to talk about extensions in a bit. And so I will put the word Titanic.png, save that file, and if I refresh, there's my picture. <laughs> so if you've got this far, good job. You've learned how to display an image on your web page. If you don't see it, um, there's a lot of ways you could debug that. One of them is by using the DOM or document object model inspector and viewing your console. And it will typically tell you when images don't load, um, either they're missing or maybe it's the wrong extension. So um, that's a good way to um figure out why an image isn't showing but the most common thing make sure that the file name is correct and notice there's no forward slashes or anything that's because that image again is in the same folder as this current web page is okay continuing on um, the next thing i want to show you with the image tag is the title attribute so if you watch my last lesson we put a title attribute on an anchor tag and if we moused over that, you would see this little gray box with that text. Well, you can also do the same thing with images. So in here, I can put title, and this is a picture of the Titanic. I'm gonna save that. And you can put whatever you want in here, whatever is relevant to the image you're displaying. Refresh. If I mouse over, there's that gray box. This is a picture of the Titanic. So you could use the title attribute on images and you can show that gray box. Um, personally, I don't care about it. <laughs> but um, 
it's something you could use if you want. And um, a more important thing for images is something called the alt attribute. And that is spelled like this, A-L-T equals and double quotes. By the way, with everything we're doing with these attributes, you can also use single quotes. Uh, that's perfectly compatible HTML code, but um, for consistency and because a lot of lessons and uh, code you'll find on the internet and um, things like that, um, it's best practice to use the double quotes for HTML, but not wrong to use single quotes. Anyway, this alt attribute um, is basically a description of what your image is. So I'm going to put, this is, actually I'll put something short, like um, old picture of the Titanic at dock and save. Now, refresh. Now, unlike the title attribute, the alt tag doesn't actually like physically show anything but it's something very important for images for a couple reasons. Uh, number one, if an image fails to load for whatever reason, if you don't have that, it will actually show that alt tag depending on the browser and circumstances to the user. So they know that, okay, the image isn't showing, but we know what was supposed to be there. Uh, the second and more important reason is for accessibility. Uh, somebody that might be a blind user to a website, which there are people that do that, um, they obviously can't see images on a web page. So the alt attribute uh, helps them understand what they're looking at or what they would be looking at if they could see. So um, it's an important thing for that reason. Or maybe not even somebody that's blind, but somebody that has um, uh, like those conditions where you can't see certain colors. There's a lot to think about when designing websites that people don't think about. and Maybe somebody can't see or interpret an image the correct way. Um, so in that case, that alt attribute is there for people that use the tools that help them see web pages that they otherwise couldn't see or understand. And the third and final point I want to make about the alt attribute is it is also an SEO thing. So... Um, Describing your pictures in this, um, it's not 100% proven. <laughs> we don't know all the secrets to how Google and Bing and all that works, but um, it's good practice to put descriptions of your images. Um, it puts keywords in your web pages, and um, it also has a small role to do with um, things like Google Images. Uh, they help understand what pictures are and how to find them on web pages as well. So, very good practice to use this alt tag. You don't see it, you don't have to put it there, but it's, um, I would advise it, especially for the accessibility side of things. Okay, continuing on with our image lesson here, the next thing I'm going to show you is how to link two images in a folder. So, as you get further along with your website building and you have more and more pages and files, you want to keep things as organized as possible. And a good way to do that is to keep all your images in a folder. So I am going to create a folder where my pictures and my web pages are. In this case, my desktop. Uh, create that folder and name it images. And you can name this whatever you want, um, but name it something without spaces in it. So it's a good practice to keep it simple like images or if you're going to use a space I would suggest using an underscore otherwise web browsers can really um, screw you up with that same with the file names like these like I wouldn't call it titanic space one because <laughs> um, that space um, can cause issues depending on what browser you're using anyway I am going to drag this titanic image into this images folder and then on my web page, I'm going to end the source right here on my image, put the name of the folder, images, forward slash, and then the file name, titanic.png. And if I save that and refresh, there's my picture. I didn't break anything. And now um, my website is more organized. So um, that's how you link to images and folders. Um, if they were a folder above, you can uh, put 
two dots, double dot, and then a forward slash to whatever the folder name is. You could step into, above, and uh, wherever you are in your current directory. So, yeah, there's multiple ways to link to images, though. <clears throat> now, another way to do this, <laughs> which I don't advise, but it's an important lesson, um, is linking to images on another website. So, I have the Wikipedia article up here for the Titanic, and here's a sweet picture of it. And um, what I'm going to do <clears throat> is click Copy Image Address. And if you don't have this option, um, you can view that image in a new tab, of course. And here it is. I am going to copy this entire address and create a new image tag on my file source. <clears throat> now, in the source attribute, I am going to paste <laughs> that link to the Titanic that we just stole off Wikipedia and let's see what happens I actually don't know what's gonna happen and <laughs> there it is so um, that is hyperlinking an image off somebody else's web server if you were actually um, on the web on a web server you don't want to steal bandwidth off somebody especially like Wikipedia and if you were on the web Sometimes they can actually detect that and it will block the image from loading. But the reason I'm showing you how to do this is because if you get advanced or you get a high traffic website, sometimes you use something called a CDN or Content Delivery Network. And if you use one of those, you might store all your images and media on there separate from your web pages. Um, so that's an important reason as to how to understand how to link to uh, images on another website. And similar to my lesson I gave on creating hyperlinks with an anchor tag, the same concepts apply to images. Um, if I'm linking to another website, I want to include that HTTP or HTTPS protocol here. If I didn't have this, it would f it would look for a folder called upload.wikimedia.org, Wikipedia. It would look for all this on my server or computer. So you have to have that attribute here, or not attribute, I mean protocol, for it to be able to load images off another server. So, not to steal bandwidth off Wikipedia or annoy them, I'm gonna get rid of this. But now you understand how to hyperlink off another server and why you would want to do that at times. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about with these images is how to resize them. So obviously, um, this picture right now is kind of huge on here. So a simple way to manipulate that would be to either change the height or the width. And both height and width are attributes in HTML for the image tag. So if I space this out, I could type in width equals 350 and that's it I could save it and view and as you can see I scale the picture down um, I could also put the height and make up a number for that like 100 and it would actually scrunch the image <laughs> uh, if you grew up in the 90s you probably seen ugly ass websites that did stuff like this um, Later on, as we learn CSS, to learn how to dynamically scale images the proper way. But the easy way is to just use that with attribute there. And it will automatically size it appropriately uh, with the height. Now, uh, one last thing I want to talk about here too. Um, there used to be a tag called align and it would help you align a picture to the left or right of text or the center. Um, that is now depreciated with HTML5 and it's been replaced by CSS. So as we learn CSS eventually, uh, you will learn how to do that. Okay guys, that's a wrap for part four with uh, creating images or linking to images. I don't want to make the video too long or boring. Um, if you've got this far, thank you for watching, and uh, please like and subscribe to my channel. Um, that's the biggest kindness you could do to me for making these, and you'll also get updates on when I do more videos. I'm very committed to sharing my knowledge with all of you. And um, uh, yeah, check out part five, 
and yeah that's about it <laughs> uh, drop a comment uh, if you have ideas for other videos um, I'm not limited to just HTML I want to teach everything I know like Python Java uh, JavaScript jQuery ASP we're gonna get into everything um, but if you have ideas or requests please let me know and uh, uh, that's about it. All right. And thanks for watching. See you next time.